generations. And now, the power of two restores the one. We got a bidet! Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're talking about the latest episode of Ahsoka. This is episode 7 out of 8. We got one left after this, so, um, you know, we were trying to see what kind of setup do we have for the finale. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about the episode, give our opinions, all that good stuff. Uh, and then, of course, it'll be up to you to decide whether you want to watch it. Uh, so, I think... Trying to think what we left. Oh, last week we left off with uh, kind of that little tease from Thrawn saying he needs more help with magic from the witches. Mm, I'm yes. not too sure how much of a... Well, I guess we kind of did get a payoff from that, if that's what they're going for. Um, So a couple things going on with this episode. One, we finally get a little bit of information from uh, what's going on with Hera which is pretty interesting. And then we get uh, what's going on with Ahsoka and Huyang within the uh, Purgle's mouth, and then eventually everybody coming together. Uh, so I guess let's just kick it off with the Hera thing, since it's so small, but in, it mm -hmm. almost feels like the episode even recognized it was a small thing they had to, you know. Yeah, just a little... There. I mean, it would have been awkward if they just never went back to it, right? Um, yeah. But, yeah, I think... Uh, Hera finally had to pay her little, you know, her consequences of her actions for the mission, the unsanctioned mission. Um, but good news is, uh, Hera's got some friends in high places. And we get a special guest appearance from everyone's second favorite droid, or first favorite, depending. Yeah, I was actually surprised to see him. Uh, Austin's talking about C-3PO. He does make an appearance in this uh, talking on behalf of Princess Leia. Um, Senator. Yeah, Senator, I should say. Uh, which is kind of an interesting way to get, you know, some sort of original trilogy embodiment speaking for Leia. Because, uh, of course... Um, Carrie Fisher has passed on, so if they were to do something with a live-action Leia at this point, they'd have to do some sort of deep fake. Um, so, yeah, Hera is getting a little bit of a talking to. She is getting slammed by that one politician that was, you know, uh, really trying to grill into her before, the one that we thought was kind of suspicious. And basically, when things seem like it's just about over... Um, C-3PO comes into the uh, little courtroom, so to speak, and says that he has some something on behalf of Leia to support what's going on with Hera. Uh, and we find out what this is, is that at like the last second, Leia had approved uh, Hera's mission, which was just, you know, barely enough to get her out of trouble. One of the things I thought was kind of funny about this scene was, you know, when... C-3PO came into the room and the senator was like, we just can't have some droid walking in here. What's going on with him? And then you hear mm -hmm. Chopper in the background griping. <laughs> I was just imagining some very few choice words that Chopper was giving to that guy at that moment. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, sometimes you can tell, but... Did you that catch one. that Leia didn't actually approve of the mission? Oh, I thought she did. So... They made it seem like she did, but when Mon Montha went to talk to Hera about it afterwards, she's like, you know Leia didn't approve this. She goes, no, but she will. So Leia doesn't even know that this is going on right now. I thought she did, but I guess I could be wrong. She, she probably does by the time C-3PO's rolling up, but I don't think she did like 
before it happened or while it was happening. I think it was kind of like in the moment thing. Uh, kind of like they asked for permission. They asked for, you know, forgiveness instead of saying Oh, asking please for and forgiveness thank you. instead Yeah. of uh, permission. Yeah, basically. I think it was that kind of situation where they were like, Hilaya, we kind of sort of found a big space donut. Um, I think I just they think probably it worked adds, something out. I don't know. just adds another layer of deception to Hare's character. Yeah. Right. I think one other big takeaway from this scene, if anything else, uh, is that we actually hear Mon Mothma referred to as Chancellor. So, you know, she's the one in charge now. Uh, she's the one that has, you know, Palpatine's old role uh, after the Emperor was taken out. So she's the, the one in charge, which makes me think, you know, because um, we see her a lot in Andor as well. And of course, she goes through the stuff with the original trilogy. Makes me wonder if we're going to see a little bit more of that in some other show about how she came to be Chancellor. Um, but I didn't even pick up on that. that her name was Chancellor? Oh, I said it to you during the show. Maybe you weren't listening to me. I, I heard you, but the words <laughs> didn't hit me like they did just now. some of those politician words, they just float around. <laughs> Senator, Chancellor. They're just labels. Everybody They're just just... placeholders. Well, see, what got me was you saying it was Palpatine's old position. Then I was like, oh. <laughs> So she is pretty powerful. <laughs> you know, she is the Senate. Well, at the same time, apparently not in the New Republic, uh, because she didn't have supreme leadership over that council. I mean, they were able to together kind of veto the mission in the first place. Yeah. So there's some kind of checks and balances type system going on there. Which makes sense that they would change things. Especially since the last chancellor, you know, really took advantage. Yep. Uh, yeah, anything else on that beginning <laughs> uh, scene you guys want to? Oh, uh, Carson Tiva stepped up for her, too. Uh, oh, we got yeah. a Mandalorian reference. That's right. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, I think that's about, I think that about covers that little first section. And then as far as Ahsoka, she is still on her way. Um, they do eventually, uh, you know, are getting very close to the planet that they're supposed to be getting to. We do get a cool little segment here. And this confirms something. I, I don't remember if I said it on camera or if I was talking to you guys off camera. But I had said something about when we saw Anakin in a previous episode, I had mentioned that what he said to her in that episode was not what came from one of the trailers. And this is where the words came from, uh, from that one trailer where he was like, you know, I have to prepare you for all these other things and blah, blah, blah. And Yeah. here we actually got it. So we got a little bit more of Hayden Christensen because Anakin was recording uh, basically some what I would call fitness videos, but it's her ability to train, uh, you know, with her lightsaber. Yeah. yeah. That scene was really cool. Um, she just, yeah, practicing lightsaber forms. So it's relatively simple stuff, but. At the same time, Anakin's, you know, basically record. Uh, I thought it was neat getting to see Ken again. yeah. I like him. It's been really good in, the, in all the scenes they brought him back for. He's killing it. Yeah, so uh, I guess along with Ahsoka, before we jump to our other characters, at least till she gets to where she's going, um, so the, the Pergil come out of hyperspace, right? But All is not as well as it seems because there is a minefield that Thrawn had put out there. So the uh, they use the ship to get out of the Pergil's mouth because you can't ride in there forever. And for a little bit, they kind of have the Pergil to take cover behind, but then the Pergil jump into hyperspace. So they're gone. Uh, then we've got Ahsoka and Hu Yang trying to like navigate through this minefield. Uh, then they've got some um, ships from Thrawn, Thrawn's army, if you will, uh, trying to chase them down and 
Uh, so they try to take cover. Is it is it an asteroid belt or was it the graveyard that they were in? I, I couldn't tell. It was the Second graveyard. One. A bunch of bones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're being chased by a few ships, um, but they end up evading them. Um, but this whole time, um, we do get kind of glimpses of Thrawn. He's kind of calling the shots on all this pursuit. Um, and he actually tells the troops to kind of pull off because, um, well, he just doesn't want them wasting time or ships or anything like that trying to find her um, when he has a much faster way to track her down. Uh, and this is where we actually see the Night Sister magic come into play again. Uh, right. Who knows if we used it for something else in between this, but we know they can use it to track down Ahsoka out in the asteroid belt in the uh, graveyard. So that's kind of cool. So one of the things that so I actually paused the show when this happened, and uh, I was talking to Sarah, and maybe get your opinion too, Austin. Mm -hmm. Did Thrawn have any ambition to seek Ezra this whole time? Or was he just kind of like, oh, he's out there. He's not bothering me. I'm going to do my own thing. Uh, it kind of seems like he's more focused on his own thing. Like, he seems pretty content to just leave them all here. Because the reason why I ask is, like, if he can use, or if they can use their magic to track her in an asteroid, I had wondered why they didn't try to do that to find Ezra, but... Yeah. Um... Yeah, my, my hunch is that they didn't really, it wasn't really their, it was like a time and resources kind of thing. Like they don't want to, kind of like they don't want to chase Sabine right now. They don't want to send people after Ezra. I mean, we saw him dispatch like every single person they sent after him, so. Right. Uh, he's been keeping up on his stuff, so. That was essentially my reaction too when Jeremy was asking me while we were watching. It's just that he didn't really care about Ezra until he realized that Ahsoka was going after Ezra slash Sabine. And that's when he wanted to know where they were because, uh, you know, it would lead him to Ahsoka. Yeah, I mean, he knows what their destination is. So if he knows where Ezra is, then he's going to be able to track them and kind of follow the whole situation and like you said he wants to stay one step ahead so yeah new, oh, we also, oh, uh, go ahead. new form of media same old thrawn baby yeah uh and we all we do eventually learn you know why he's doing all these things uh but let's see yeah so they track her in the graveyard belt uh they you know, get her out of hiding because he orders Captain Enoch, I believe his name is, um, to fire on the, her location. And so uh, she gets pulled out of hiding from uh, the couple of ships that were chasing her. And eventually they find a small place to uh, hunker down and she calls out to Sabine. Kind of yeah. very similar to the way Luke did for Leia in Empire Strikes Back. Um, so I think this kind of confirms a little bit, well, maybe confirms a little bit more of Sabine's connection with the Force. Uh, I'm, I'm not 100% sure in Empire if Luke was only able to reach out because Leia was Force-sensitive, or if he can do that to any being. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> I, the way I understood it is like they both kind of had a connection. Um, it wasn't like a one way phone call. I mean, it kind of was, but at the same time, I mean, Sabine knew it was Ahsoka's presence. Uh, or at least she, it seemed like she did. I mean, she said it was like familiar. Uh, so maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, so while this is happening to Sabine, she is hanging out with Ezra, right? Uh, and so we yeah. get quite a bit more Ezra in this episode than we do the previous. Uh, and they are driving around on these interesting vehicles that the turtle-looking people 
have. Um, they just look like massive versions of their shells, honestly. That's how I thought of it. Anyway. Yeah, they're just little beetle shells that hover. I love them. And they go five miles an hour. <clears throat> and they actually like blend in so well with the hill. Like when they did the landscape shots from like far away. Um, what else? Um, I He's been asking a lot of questions, trying to figure out where she came from and why Ahsoka's not with yes. her and stuff. And that's exactly what she, I wanted to talk about. You keep dying this questions. is approaching. She does not want to talk about it. This is approaching like Janet Van Dyne level, like quantum mania about her, like not wanting to talk about Kang. Like this is approaching that level of like silliness in a movie where like the character just like refuses to have a conversation that needs to be had. Um, so get it over with Sabine. Rip it off like a band aid. It's fine. He'll forgive you. Like just. Anyway. Will he though? Maybe. Maybe not. But uh, uh, yeah. So the truth will come out. The truth will come out eventually. Ezra might be a little bit upset about how Sabine got here with the aid of the enemy. Uh, especially when she had the opportunity to kind of shut the whole thing down by destroying the map, if you think about it that way. Um, so we you want to we... tackle uh, what's going on with Shin and Balin? Yeah, yeah. So from the previous episode, we know they were supposed to hunt down Ezra and Sabine and destroy them with the instructions. Um, and uh so they're on the way uh kind of tracking them down they actually like appear in front of the herd of little guys moving with all the i forget what they're called nodi or something the the little beetle group that uh ezra and sabine are with um they kind of corner them and like kind of herd them like dogs i don't know so they they see them off in the distance on the horizon and they just turn the other way um but um, things go sideways real quick because the bandits are still working with um, Balin and Shin. So the bandits, uh, they just start charging after this this herd. Um, and we get this really cool kind of chase sequence like kind of reminded me of like, I don't know, a bunch of guys on horses, I guess. Like a western. Yeah, like a western, you could say. So that, that scene was really cool. What did you guys think about uh, that little chase? I thought it was like comical how slow the little beetle homes were compared yeah. to everything else. Like, do you really think you're going to outrun them in this? <laughs> yeah, well, they're, yeah, they're, I mean, they're just made to go from, you know, point A to point B. They're not, they're not made for this. But they were surprisingly durable. Um, they were able to absorb a lot of, a lot of blaster fire. I thought the battle stuff was interesting because like when they eventually catch up to them, they have some uh, little skirmish there with Sabine and Ezra. What are your guys' opinions? So when I had this thought, I thought to myself, well, how dare you? Because it worked in this other thing that we've seen. And for some reason, I don't like it here. Uh, so Ezra refuses his lightsaber back from Sabine. Uh, you know, he says, my weapon is the force. Uh, and so he's just using the force to try to combat all these dudes. And I thought it was kind of silly. Like, I didn't really like it too much. And I thought to myself, like, this, this isn't very, this isn't my thing. And then I thought back, like, when Vader messed with Reva back in the Kenobi show, I thought it was so cool. Uh, I just, I don't know something didn't hit here the same way that it did with Vader. Yeah. <clears throat> and maybe it's because <clears throat> like these are just I don't know. For one thing, they're like vastly outnumbered. Like it's just the two of them until, um, I mean, eventually they do get a little bit of backup, but there's just all these bandits and Shin is there. Uh, Balin's kind of doing his own thing. Um, but yeah, 
Ezra just says, the Force is my ally, and that's all I need. And he's just dodging attacks left and right. Uh, and literally, like, left and right, like, he doesn't see them coming. Like, he's, he senses them with the Force, and he's, like, dunking these blows. Um, he eventually does it the same thing with the lightsaber blow, and it, like, nicks a little piece of his hair. Yeah. Um, so... I wasn't a fan of that at first, either, of him turning away the lightsaber. And I think part of it's because, you know, you think back to when Rey was giving Luke Skywalker his lightsaber and he just tossed it. It kind of had similar vibes to that, where it's, like, uh -huh. almost disrespectful. Yeah. But if you think about it, he's been without his lightsaber for how many years? Like, yeah. he has really honed in his skills yeah. to survive an attack without it. So to use it, he'd probably be really out of practice with it, and it would almost slow him down. Possibly. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. I don't know. I was just really hoping to see some live-action Ezra slashing through things. Um, yeah, yeah. It seemed like, in my mind, um, I think he was capable enough at the end of Rebels that I think uh, he could have been rusty, like Sarah said, but... I think if Ezra would have taken that lightsaber and had the force and the lightsaber, oh my gosh, that troop would have went down so fast. Wouldn't even been a scene worth filming. They would have just been all taken out and silly. Well, speaking of silliness, um, there was a scene that came up a little bit after this, uh, like after the battle had happened, and uh, Shin eventually arrives because Balin says, hey, you know, you go take care of those two. And uh, she says, you're not coming. And he goes like, no, I have my own thing I have to take care of. So Shin goes down there on her own uh, with the the group. And when she eventually has the dudes all crossed up because the uh, Thrawn's troops also uh, arrive at this point, all the stormtroopers uh, with Ezra and Sabine surrounded, uh, we get that one big you know, tr character trait that Ezra has where he is able to dis like talk them into like delaying and stuff. He was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Why take us prisoner. And I'm just like, man, I remember this like translating super well in Rebels. I just, yeah. I didn't know. Maybe it's just the actor for me. I'm not quite sure if I'm ready for live action Ezra. Yeah. I, I think they tried to do a lot of the same things. And I think the character's just older, right? Like he's like a man, like he's a man there with a beard. Like he looks like Moses, right? <laughs> so I'm fine with them being funny and cracking jokes and like his little quips with Sabine. Um, and like the lightsaber thing, I did think was kind of funny. Like he's like, no, I don't need it. Like you, you've been practicing, like you use it. Um, I don't know. That was very Ezra to me. Um, and and I didn't really think of it until you said it. But yeah, when he was like, no, 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 like, just take us prisoners. That's totally like something that have done in like Rebels. Um, but yeah, I mean, hey, so it's like an old tactic. He's just trying it. It didn't work for me only because I know who he's using the tactic on. He's using it on, you know, Shin. So Shin and all the henchmen, granted, but um, you know, it does work though because it delays them just enough time. Uh, you know, speaking of Ahsoka, uh, so Ahsoka is making her way to Ezra's location. She's being chased down by those same uh fighters, uh, and so she decides to basically jump ship literally. Uh, so she's going to have Hu Yang fly close to the ground so she can hop out. Um, she hops out and crosses up with Balin, uh, and they have a little bit of a skirmish. Um, I kind of question the purpose of that. Uh, I don't know about you, Austin. I like, I just seen it seemed like it. It kind of had that Lord of the Rings feel to it, where it's like, why didn't they just take the eagles all the way? Whereas like here, why didn't she just fly super close to? Uh, where Ezra and Sabine were and then just jump out there and, you know, wreck havoc. Um, I think, and and I'd have to watch it back again. Um, it seemed like the way 
first of all, jumping out of a starship as it's like flying a plane, like and trying to survive that. I mean, she's a Jedi, right? So she's a lot, you know, she can actually do something crazy like that. But um, I think the idea was for her to, for the enemy to still think she's flying the ship around. So like the idea was for the fighters to still be following her ship around. And then they don't know that she's like grounded, I guess. That was kind of what I thought their plan was. Because the, the ships were still chasing their ship. I, I mean, maybe just splitting up. But yeah, like if they see somebody get out of the ship, you know, they might start directing their fire at them rather than... I think you're right, because she said something to Hu Yang along the lines of, like, you distract them. So I think she wanted him to fly the ship and deal with that. But the other thing we got out of her little skirmish with Balin, so although neither one of them dies is it's kind of almost a callback to when she was in uh, the world between worlds with Anakin and he was trying to say, you know, like live or die, make your choice kind of a thing. Like one of us is going out mm -hmm. and this is just another situation where she's throwing that in their face of like, we're not going to die today. Like I'm not dying. You're not <laughs> dying. Magic trick dust everywhere. She disappears. Yep. You know, I don't, I don't have to be you. I don't have to do this. She's My got own... better things to do. My only hope with that, because like when she was in World Between Worlds, uh, you know, that was the moment that turned Anakin or from Darth Vader to back to Anakin. And I kind of hope that that's I from all the other Disney projects where we see a bad guy and they have to redeem the person to come back to the light. I don't want them to do that over and over and over again. And so it looked like it was almost the same thing where, you know, she had Balin at that moment where she could kill him, but she chose not to. And then when she, you know, hops on the little creature thing and leaves, we can see that he's contemplating what just happened. And so I, I hope, I still hope that it's not like a, we're going to turn everybody good and then we're going to, you know, kumbaya at the end. Because we also get something similar with Shin. Yeah, yeah, at the end. So Ahsoka eventually um, gets to, you know, Ezra and Sabine and helps them out. Yeah, what sorry, one little thing on their like fight. I don't know. I think I think they were in like a stalemate. Um like Ezra uh Ahsoka was like blocking his saber and then she was trying to strike with the other one, but I think Balin had like caught her hand with the saber. So like I think they were in like a stalemate. But yeah, Hu Yang uh swept down with the plane. And it looked like flares came out. It was either flares or shots from one of the, their ship or the ships chasing their ship. Um, but that was enough smoke and kicked up enough debris for her to like break the fight and get some space. And she steals his mouth, so she he can't follow if he wanted to. Right. It's not like they have force run in this universe, but I yeah. digress. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um always funny to bring that up because that was a pre-disney thing and then it's in one movie and then we never see it ever again yeah uh so yeah ahsoka goes and meets up with sabine and ezra saves the day uh they take out all those stormtroopers which i thought was i thought it was interesting because i was kind of hoping to see like you know if these are the quote-unquote zombie stormtroopers or if they're similar to um, Marok, where you know maybe they would turn to dust when they die and stuff. Um, will we get any of that? And we kind of didn't, so we don't really have any confirmation of still what they are. Uh, I do know that if you turn on subtitles, that it says that they're called the Night Troopers. So there is some sort of possible influence from the Night Sisters, um, but there there's no like connection. I think per se that we can say that the same thing that happened with Marok is happening with them. Yeah, I I didn't notice anything really too special about them. They seem just as um, useless as all the other troopers we've ever seen. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. Uh, so once they get that skirmish done, um, you know, Shin is now the odd man out basically because uh, i think there's ahsoka sabine 
um, Ezra, and then all the little turtle dudes uh, surrounding with their her. Slingshots. What's that? With their slingshots. Yeah, with their slingshots and their rocks. Uh, and he's so, a sharpshooter. He hit him. He did that slingshot. This was another moment where I was like, "Please do not just have her turn," because I felt like they were foreshadowing it a little bit here too. Where when she was questioning Balin of like, "You're not gonna help me," and he's like, "No, I thought maybe she was thinking about like, well, geez, all of a sudden you don't want to be my friend, kind of a thing." And so you know, now that she's right in front of Ahsoka, and she's like, you know, just, just. Just come with me. I'll, I'll, I'll help you fix everything. Kind yeah, of like, we'll help you. Come with us. So I'm happy to, at least for now, see what happens with Shin, where she just decides to run away. And she decides not to just join the group and be part of the part of the band. Yeah, where do you, where do you think she's going? I think because... she's going back to the um, like where Thrawn and all them are. Hmm. Just back to ba ba base camp. That's my guess. Either that. That that's that's my only guess. I mean, I can speculate and say she's going back to Balin to, you know, say like, "Yo, I it didn't work out." Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's the thing. Is where is Balin? Because uh, Thrawn's kind of tracking the battlefield the whole time, and they yeah. do notice that Balin is not present where everyone else is fighting. Um, so they know he's kind of gone off script. Um, so, yeah, uh, Shin could be going to find Balin and see, like, what he's up to, or she could be going back to, to Thrawn to see, like, what the next orders are. Um, but... One of the big things that I realized with this episode, and maybe you guys picked up on it before, I don't know, but I didn't really understand why Thrawn hadn't left yet. Uh it seemed like, okay, so he was stuck on the planet because he didn't have the proper hyperdrive, right? So then they got the ship with the proper hyperdrive. So I didn't, I was trying to figure out, like, why isn't he gone already? Because we know he's not waiting for Balin and Shin. Because he had already said in a previous episode he didn't care if they just stayed there. Um, but one, like, really little one-liner thing that they said here uh, was essentially that they have almost finished packing all of his... All of his stuff, you know, his troops, his armory, whatever, from his ship onto the hyperdrive ship. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess they're planning to leave his current ship behind and he's trying to transport everything else to the other ship. So he's almost ready to leave the planet. Yeah, I think that's that's really all we know. We don't really have a lot of the details. Um, he, we know he's like loading cargo onto his ship. Um I think, I don't know, I was thinking that that hyperspace ring was going to bring his, like, I forget what the name of the ship's called, but Chimera. Yeah. Um, I was thinking that that big ring was going to bring the Chimera back to the galaxy we know. I was thinking that too. Um, and what That's kind of how it seems like it's going to go. Because they're they're taking stuff out of that temple and then putting it into the Star Destroyer. Yeah. We don't know what it is. Um, yeah. They've just they brought it up twice now. I gotcha. But anyway, that's why they haven't left yet. It was loading cargo, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, we see a little loading screen of how much. I thought that was kind of funny. Like it's almost complete and it's just like you know back in dial-up days when you see the bar almost all the way done did it just go backwards yeah. <laughs> who hit refresh <laughs> yeah so that's the whole point of what's going on you know on the outside with balin and shin is it's just purely a distraction so that Thrawn can get his stuff all loaded up because you know you know it seems like he's being outsmarted, but here we actually see that no, it's actually all part of the plan. Yeah. Um, so much so that he's willing to call this a victory because he thinks he's solved enough time where they're basically done. Yeah. I think he's going to end up being correct. Um, again, I'm still hoping 
that in the next episode, the finale, uh, he makes it back and um, does something to, you know, wreak havoc on the New Republic, and then we call it good. That's my hope. Well, yeah, we got to throw it in their face that they were wrong. Well, yeah, Yeah. but, uh, I mean, Ahsoka's also got to get a big W at the end of this somehow, so how's that going to happen? I'm not sure. I feel like I would not be surprised if we end the season with them stuck on this planet because the Purgle aren't there to take them back and somehow Hera has to go back and get them. Like they like lose that, that we allude to that like she has this to go is back. like that'd be really interesting. Like this well, is basically like uh what Revenge of the Sith, right? That's like the one that ends in the most sour, bad place. Yeah. Yep. So I got a question for both of you, and I have not talked to Sarah about this yet. There is a small little thing that we get in the episode where Thrawn wants to know what's going on with Ahsoka. For some reason, I thought he actually knew about her from Rebels, but I digress. Um, And he is asking for information on her. And uh, Morgan comes up with a little tablet saying... This is what we got from the data bank from the Inquisitors. And he finds out that Ahsoka's master was Anakin Skywalker. And he kind of like thinks about it for a second. Do you think there's going to be any like dark magic going on where he tries to uh, like resurrect a Vader so that when she was in the world between worlds, they can kind of pay off that she beat him in his evil mode? Maybe I'm here for it. I mean, we just got Hayden Christensen in this episode. Why not put him in the finale as well? Um, just give us a little Darth Vader v Ahsoka. I just I, thought it was interesting. I don't understand what you're asking. Not like a zombie? What? Like a you, zombie? You're saying like Night Sister kind of thing, right? Where they create some like. Right. Like a force vision slash force enemy. Kind of like, um, do you remember the guy that they cut open earlier and he just like was a puff of smoke? Marok, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like what if they do that again? But it's like Anakin or Darth Vader this time. I just thought it was odd that they focused so much on that for those few seconds mm-hmm. of him like contemplating, oh, you know, this is who I'm messing with, kind of the thing. Um, yeah. Even the, I mean, even the Anakin scene in this episode specifically, like, I don't think there was really, like, it was nice. I, I liked the scene. I thought it was really cool, but I didn't think there was like a huge payoff for it, I guess. If that makes any sense. I would agree um, with that. Yeah. I would say this episode, well, I do like that they're showing how she's, you know, still keeping up with things because we saw from Tales of the Jedi that, you know, he put her through the ringer um, quite a bit. And so now she has these tapes or data banks, whatever you want to call them, to help her moving forward to, you know, stay up to par with everything else. So I thought it was kind of cool to see it. Um Maybe they spent a little bit much time on it. Um, The one thing I was trying to focus on that scene and I really couldn't pick it apart was uh, so they they zoom in and show like where she's putting her data bank. It's in like a little box and then she has training droids and then there's some lightsabers. And I didn't know if those were like training savers or if there were any of them that had some sort of significance. Like if she found one from an old friend that had passed away or something like Order 66. But I was trying to see what those lightsabers were and I feel like it was a little too fuzzy for me to see what was going on there. Yeah. I totally missed that, but I'm sure if you couldn't see it, I probably wouldn't be able to tell either. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the person to ask to be able to pick out anything any specific lightsaber hilts or anything. Like I can get the the real popular ones probably, but 
Yoda's lightsaber has a smaller, so it's easy. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm trying to remember, how did the episode end? Uh, we get a happy reunion. It, I, I was expecting, and yeah, this is our penultimate episode. We got one more, so I was expecting things to get really wild and crazy this episode, but same. Um, we just get a really happy reunion, which is great. Um, of Ahsoka, Ezra, and Sabine. So now, hopefully, that Ahsoka's there, they spill the beans. Yeah, I, I, I would be lying if I didn't say that this episode made me slightly worried for the finale. Um, just because I feel like there should have been a little bit more of a carrot in front of our noses um, as far as just something because I, I I feel like I feel like there's nothing to I mean we can speculate but I don't think that there's yeah. really anything concrete that we can be like oh I get that to look forward to next week like, we I don't think, know they're gonna like, make think, it off yeah yeah I think they tried to kind of give us that when they gave us that like loading screen scene where he says like our car goes almost loaded up but we already knew that. We already knew they were working on that. Right. Um, and I honestly, if we were a whole episode later and it, it was they were still working on it, I'd be a little surprised if I'm being honest. But, yeah, if they show that um, loading screen again. Yeah. That's the second loading screen we've got in this this mini series. So there was the one for the map too. Oh wow! I don't remember that. When it had like all the little orbs that kept lighting up around. That was the when we lost Maroc. Yeah, the episode. Oh, gotcha. I think I don't know about you guys because I, I know Thrawn's super cool and everything, but I think my favorite live action reveal of this season is the uh, the Night Sisters. I think they're super cool looking. Yeah. They are very spooky. Yeah, I can see them being a Halloween costume nowadays, even though they are definitely not new, you know? Yeah. I think they look neat, but their characters fall kind of flat for me. They just, they haven't really had enough lines or enough, uh, like, screen time for me to really think anything other than, oh, their costume's cool, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. I I'm still interested to see if they're just puppets of Thrawn like they seem very down for whatever he wants to do um and I don't know if that's if they have some kind of deal worked out or we're still kind of waiting to see uh, why they're in cahoots together I guess why they're so willing to do all these favors for him I need another favor like yes sir yeah, I'll be right there the, the, the threat of destiny demands it or something Whatever that means. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, I just, I see Thrawn as the, the, the big bad kid on the playground and they're just doing whatever he says. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, so let's see. Next next episode, we're going to have to get Balin doing whatever Balin's doing. Uh, you think we'll get any crazy cameos? I mean, I did not expect 3PO to show up. That one kind of just... That's fair. Opened up. I mean, we've already gotten such crazy cameos this show. Like, what else could there be? But I'm, I think I, we're going to see Leia. That'd be cool. Yeah, I I think, you know, if they're planning to... Because they're going to do a movie eventually you know, with the stuff. And it seems, especially with her mentioning Heir to the Empire, which is a book that was before Disney bought it, and Luke, Han, and Leia were very much involved in that book. It makes me wonder if we're going to get some sort of tease of uh, one of those original trilogy. Like you said, Leia is a good possibility because they keep talking about her. But I know one thing that... You know, people criticize the sequel trilogy for is 
we never saw all of our main heroes on the screen at one time. And I think it would be crazy if this show ends with those three in one shot, basically saying it's time to go, like to go take care of this. I think that'd be a cool way to end it. And it would be like huge hype for the movie. You think like Luke on Leia? Yeah. So like, you know, Leia, we see her probably pop up first because we've been hearing everything, but coming around the, the corner or whatever is general Skywalker and captain solo and uh you know they're all talking about these you know thrones here we have to do get this battle ready and they're ready to go and then that's mm-hmm. what we have to look forward to yeah i was um i actually thought when 3po started like i thought that was going to be his uh, his plea his argument whatever whatever you want to call it um i thought he was going to bring up the jedi and luke and leia and how the Jedi, you know, got them this far that why would they, you know, falter from giving them their support? Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I guess that was something I was thinking about. All right. Do we have any other final thoughts on the episode? Just can't sure wait to see what happens next. Yeah. It's going to be really uh, crazy, I guess. I feel like the, the, the reaction to that question kind of backs up my thought of, like, I, I told Sarah, I said, I think this was probably one of the weaker episodes for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think so. It probably was. Um, not to say it didn't have cool sequences, like... Um, it was visually like you know just as great as all the other ones but just not as much happened i feel like the only surprise really was was 3po because most of the other things were like okay we knew ahsoka was pretty much there so she was gonna find them mm-hmm. we balen had hinted about not being on the same page as shin so that wasn't like a big surprise um, they'd talked about using the Night Sisters, so using them wasn't really a surprise. So, mm-hmm. kind of everything here was pretty predictable, and I think yeah. that it wasn't it wasn't bad. It just kind of fell flat a little bit. Yeah, that's a really good point. Oh, kind of what you were saying about um, the Night Sisters falling flat a little bit. To me, they are they have the presence of, of one singular character like they're just they are one conglomerate to me of the three I, 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 just, I don't know exactly like you said like they don't have any personalities really um and they're they're witches i mean they don't have to be they don't have to have i mean being grouchy is a personality like they could show <laughs> maybe they should argue a little bit or something you know that's I'm what i'm show. saying Let's get some witch drama. Here for the drama. <laughs> it's going to be like that scene from uh, Sleeping Beauty. Blue, pink, blue. Like when they're yeah. switching the dress. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, they're all bickering and then Theron's just got to shut it down. Yeah. I think one other thing I'm hoping for in the next episode, I'm kind of hoping that Shin... I hope Shin goes and takes out Balin and then becomes Thrawn's right hand person. I think that'd be crazy. We all know that unfortunately the actor passed away for Balin. So that might be a way for Shin to kind of rise to power a little bit and then uh, be on Thrawn's side. Yeah, I'm interested to see. Um, yeah, we're just completely in the dark about what Balin's intentions are here. Uh, but he does seem like he wants a different path for Shin. Like, he doesn't want her to follow him. Um, right. That does seem very clear. Like, he, he specifically tells her to go find her place in the New Empire alongside Thrawn and the Night Sisters. Um, yeah. 
I haven't fact checked it, but have you seen the thing that's going around that says like Balin has a thing on his arm and people translated it and it has like basically all the original trilogy characters' names in Arabish? I did see that. Um, and I think I saw it in enough places where I, I believe it. Um, and I don't have any idea why. Same. It makes me wonder what would be going on there. Yeah. Yeah, like a hit list almost. Yeah. Um, it was like right on his wrist, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and we got a little... Uh, I wasn't actually expecting Ahsoka to face off with um, Balin again this episode. So I was a little bit surprised when we got that. Uh, but then again, it wasn't really too much of a scuffle. I mean, they got they both got a lot of good strikes in, but they were pretty evenly matched until uh, Ahsoka just pieced out right the fight. So I'm hoping they square up again. That's that's one thing I'm looking forward to in the next episode. I want I want to get a, a, a an Ahsoka W in there in the Balin one v one. Yeah. Something's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be. Yeah. Somebody's no gotta way. take Balin down. Yeah, no way they can drop the ball. I mean, that would be the hugest letdown I think ever. Yeah, after they've done this well, like so far. Yeah, and Dave Filoni, we trust. And Dave Filoni, yeah. And yeah, I don't want to. I mean, I feel like we're just rehitting the same drum here, but uh, let. Like, I don't think this episode was bad. It just wasn't... I, just, it wasn't, I set the bar so high for myself. It wasn't bad. But there's the thing. All the other episodes are so good. So, uh -huh. you know, I, I just kind of felt like there should have been something a little bit more to set up what's happening next, aside from spending 42 minutes just to get the band back together. So... Yeah. Like give me give me an after credit scene or something of some like some of these like coffins like zoom into one of them and like show me what's in there. Yeah, I mean I said coffin like I don't know if they're actually coffins, but just yeah, something so so small but would be such a huge thing in the next episode. Yeah, like even like so when I was talking about if Shin goes and fights Balin. The one of the final shots could have been her walking up to him, igniting her lightsaber, and then we'd have that to look forward to. Mm -hmm. They have a little face off. Yeah, or if um, Thrawn is planning to use some magic to resurrect somebody, or to um, get some sort of image of whoever, uh, you know, just have that process starting, not necessarily finished, and just have like that hint of what's going on. Just something that makes us. I feel like. In comparison to weeks past, I'm not as excited going into the finale. And it's the freaking finale. <laughs> right. Like, I'll be excited because it's the finale. Right. But I'm not as excited as I want to be. Right. Yeah. Well, we will find out. We will get, again, probably more questions than answers next week. But it is the last episode next week. So we're just going to have to look forward to it. Will Ezra find his way home? We'll find out next week. <laughs> On Dragon um. Ball Z. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's a, a pretty good wrap up there for uh, this week's episode. Uh, so we talked about episode seven of Ahsoka. Like we said, next week is the finale. So uh, we will be covering that as well. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. That way you are notified when it drops. Drop some like if you like the video and drop a comment letting us know your thoughts on this week's episode and what you think is going to happen next week. And then as always, everybody, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.